Chapter 103 Returning home in close, Emperor Dan said with a smile, yet he immediately stared wide-eyed. Seeing this, Kang Chon looked along with his gaze, and couldn't help but stare wide-eyed as well. Not far away, Xiao Jin, who was originally playing with the Dragon Balls, however, had already swallowed the Dragon Balls, and was currently lying on the ground, not knowing whether he was dead or alive, and his entire body was still shrouded in a green glow. Kang Tion was anxious, and did not pay attention, even let Xiao Jin swallowed the Dragon Pearl. This time things are big. Emperor Dan said from the side, Kid, don't be nervous. This little guy is fine. What's going on? What's wrong with it? Kang Chion sniffed and remained worried. He didn't care about the Dragon Pearl. But Little Gold was his best friend. Don't let anything happen to it. Nothing serious. This little monkey is very refined. Dragons are also demon race. The power contained in this Dragon Pearl is incomparably powerful. Naturally, it is very attractive to it. Dan Emperor then laughed and cursed. This little monkey swallowed this Dragon Pearl. At the moment, it is absorbing the power in the Dragon Pearl. When it wakes up, I'm afraid that it will be formed into a demonic Dan. You brat was unlucky this time. You wasted such a great opportunity for nothing. And you still don't know how long it will take to break through to the Nine Revolutions realm. Kang Chon was relieved when he heard this, as long as Xiao Jin was fine. As for himself, there was no hurry. After all, his cultivation had risen to fast during this period of time. There was no need to swallow the Dragon Pearl again. Now that there was still a year and a half before the Heavenly Tao Sex Disciple Acceptance Ceremony, he was confident that he could break through to the Nine Revolutions realm within this period of time, so he wasn't worried. Elder Dan was very pleased with this attitude of Kang Chon. In fact, in his opinion, the Dragon Pearl would be most effective if given to Xiao Jin to take, as Xiao Jin was also a demon race as the Jarong. It could better absorb the power in the Dragon Pearl. It was not unlikely that this time Xiao Jin's strength would have a very big increase, and he would be able to help Kang Tion then. Since that's the case, Elder Dan, I'll trouble you to take care of Little Gold. Knowing that Little Jin would be fine, Kang Tion put Little Jin into the Reverse Heavenly Cauldron and said to Emperor Dan. Emperor Dan nodded at his words and said, The Vajra Divine Monkey's potential is extraordinary. It will definitely be a powerful assistant for you in the future. I will teach it well. HMM. So many thanks to you old man. Kang Chon thanked, then took out a ghost face mask from his bosom and studied it. This was the relic that his father had left him. For this mysterious father, Kang Chon felt that the only clue to finding him was through this ghost face mask. Through talking to the little girl's master, Kang Chon knew that his father was bound to have some sort of relationship with the corpse, catching sect. Just what exactly was that relationship? He was unable to determine right now. Now that the corpse catching sect had sealed the mountain for a hundred years, he was afraid that for the time being, there was no possibility for him to inquire about his father through the corpse catching sect anymore. Kang Tion could not help but feel depressed in his heart. All right, kid, I know that the corpse catching sect has news about your father, but right now your strength is insufficient. It is better not to get involved with this sect in any way. Otherwise, the consequences will be hard to predict. When you are strong enough in other days, come back to the corpse catching sect to find out. Emperor Dan saw Kang Chon dazed and said. Kang Chon nodded. He was aware of the power of the corpse catching sect with the little strength he had now. It was not enough to get news of his father from the corpse catching sect. For the sake of today's plan, it was better to prepare for the Heavenly Tao Sex Disciple Acceptance Ceremony, which was his path in the future. After thinking about it, Kang Chion gathered his emotions and began to concentrate on his cultivation. The battle at Fendu Mountain had allowed him to see the battle of wills between two powerful people at the outbreathing stage, which had given him some insights in his intention cultivation. Nowadays, Kang Chion's cultivation had already reached the 8th turn realm, 
which was considered powerful among his peers. And now all he had left was to break through the ninth turn and then conjure the Dan. This was something that Kang Chon was no longer worried about. It was just a matter of time. Apart from the cultivation aspect, the divine abilities that Kang Chon was now able to perform were the hegemony fist, star absorbing technique, heaven escaping hand, and the ugly thunderstorm blade. Although the hegemony fist was powerful, it was difficult to progress. Unless his hegemony intent was taken to the next level, then the power of the hegemony fist would also increase. And although the star absorbing technique was terrifying, because of its specificity, it could only be used as a means of preserving one's life, and it was better not to perform it without necessity. In addition, although the heaven tackling hand was powerful, it had already been exposed to the world, and future opponents would surely be prepared for it. Kang Tiong thought about it and felt that what he lacked the most right now was a sword technique. Knowing that the strength of a cultivator, apart from his cultivation aptitude, there were also magic treasures. His reverse heavenly cauldron was very mysterious and could not be catalyst for the time being. So the only thing left was the long black blade of spiritual artifact grade. But the blade also needed a blade technique to work with it and give it maximum power. Therefore, the importance of the blade technique could be imagined. This was the only thing Kang Chon lacked right now. If there was a powerful blade technique, the power exerted with the black long knife would definitely be powerful, so that he wouldn't have to rely on the overlord fist all the time. Thinking of this, Kang Chon couldn't help but recall what Emperor Dan had said today, when he passed through the 10,000 corpses Kaozong, asking him to combine the hegemony fist to create a peerless blade technique. At that time, when he was at Fengdu Mountain, Kang Chon had already comprehended it, and now that he thought about it, he had some clues. The essence of the hegemony fist is hegemony, and the blade technique I created also follows the hegemony path. If I can combine them, and combine them with the hegemony intent, it will be my most powerful strike. Kang Chan's gaze flickered, and there was a vague saber intent that was brightening and flickering in his eyes. He closed his eyes and operated the hegemony fist in his mind, rehearsing it over and over again. And finally, he switched to his long black blade and slashed out the stronger slash according to the trajectory of the hegemony fist's operation. Kang Chion just kept slashing. With each slash, he had to think carefully. Time passed unnoticed. The next morning, Kang Chion broke open his eyes and to compelling saber intense asterisk 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 came out, making a whimpering sound in the air. This night's cultivation had already allowed him to find a hint of an eyebrow, and all that remained was to perfect it. He believed that before long, he would be able to execute his own first blade. After some freshening up, Kang Chon packed up his things and prepared to leave Fendu City. The bodies of Ant King and the Grand Elder had already been found, and he was going to bring them back to Heavy Iron City for a generous burial. When he was leaving the Haoyu residence, Kang Chion wanted to say goodbye to Wo Won Yong. This beautiful woman was the first friend he had met after coming to the cultivation realm, and he felt the need to cherish this friendship. So, Kang Chion called Shower and inquired about Wo Won Yong's whereabouts. He knew that Shower surely knew, and as expected, when Shower saw Kang Chon inquiring, he immediately informed Hua Won Yong's whereabouts. It turned out that at this moment, Hua Won Yong, Liu Sui Feng, Lei Yun, and the others had already been waiting for him at the Hao Yu residence's restaurant, only that they had not informed him because they were afraid of disturbing his cultivation. Kang Chon couldn't help but smile slightly. This kid had saved some effort and could say goodbye to them together. After thinking about it, Kang Chon walked towards the Hao Yu residence's restaurant with his baggage. Hao Yu Ju's restaurant was very lively at the moment. Everywhere were cultivators talking about yesterday's Feng Du mountain battle. This battle had to great an impact. Not only did the true disciples of the Heavenly Dao sect appear, but in the end, it was the powerful underpinnings of the corpse-catching sect that led to the death of the body. 
and even such legendary figures as the ancient powerful man were involved. None of these became the talk of the crowd after drinking, and those spectators who survived the battle from Fendu Mountain were currently bragging about recounting the splendor of that battle. Kang Chon followed the waiter and arrived at an elegant room, and before he even entered, he could already hear the voices of Liu Sui Feng, Lei Yun, and Hua Wonyong. He smiled and pushed the door open. Brother Kang Chon, you came just in time, let's drink three cups first. Seeing Kang Chon's arrival, Lei Yun raised a cup of wine and handed it over with a big smile. On the side, Liu Sui Feng also followed suit. He bitterly said to Kang Chon, Brother, you've come. This guy doesn't want to die from drinking. It's better for you to fight with him. Ha ha ha. I can't beat you. I must win you at the drinking table this time. Lei Yun looked at Kang Chon and laughed. Kang Chon could not help but smile at the words, took the wine cup and drank it down, immediately chopped his liver. What kind of wine is this girl? The strength is surprisingly so. The production point was choked down. Looked at the side of Liu Sui Feng snickering. Kang Chen could not help but glare at him, know that he was Yin. All flowers want a wrong in the side to explain. This is the great Tang country master given to the Zhenin king of the tribute wine. Was Lei Yun to steal out? The strength can be bigot. Even if the Jiden stage cultivator three cups go down to also want a drunk. So it's tribute wine. No wonder Kang Chom thought to himself. Come on, come on, one more cup. I say flower fairy, if you don't drink it, can't you stop others from drinking it? That said, you two haven't developed to that point yet. Lei Yun muttered and continued to pour Kang Chon a cup. Flower thinking wrong was instantly filled with shyness when she heard this. Her beautiful eyes glared fiercely at Lei Yun. Her small face was red, her eyes flickering as she secretly glanced at Kang Chon. Elder brother Lei, I can't drink this wine. I'm leaving Fengdu city today. This time I came to say goodbye to you. Kang Chon shook his head with a bitter smile. The three of them were surprised when they heard this. Liu Sui Feng asked, so soon, isn't it still more than a year away from the heavenly Tao sex apostle acceptance ceremony? What are you in such a hurry for? Yes, yes, I've already agreed with the two of them to travel the great Tang cultivation realm together before heading to the imperial capital together, and I was about to call you along. Lei Yun also said. On the side, Hua Qianrong also looked at Kang Chon with a face full of anticipation, the color of her beautiful eyes inexplicable. I'm really sorry, I have something to go back to my hometown, so next time we have the chance to travel together. Kang Chon said somewhat apologetically. Next time, there won't be a chance. Next time we all worship the Heavenly Tao sect, ha! Liu Sui Feng laughed at his words. Lei Yun also laughed out loud and said, Yes, after the Heavenly Tao sect's disciple acceptance ceremony, we'll be masters and brothers. Well, since that's the case, you go ahead and we'll meet up at the Imperial capital. Don't forget, you still owe me a battle. After saying that, Lei Yun looked towards the heavens with a battle spirit, I will definitely accompany you when the Heavenly Tao Sex Disciple Acceptance Ceremony is held. Kang Chon's eyes were as brilliant as stars, and he was similarly filled with battle intent. See you in the Imperial Capital. Liu Sui Feng and Hua Qianrong also arched their hands together to bid farewell. Kang Chon then left the Haoyu residence. As he walked out of the door of the Haoyu residence, he turned back with some reluctance. When he first came to Fengdu City from the Heavy Iron City, he had been living here for more than a month. Quite a few things had happened in this month, or so that made him incredulous, indeed. It was better to step out of Heavy Iron City to truly see the vastness of the outside world. Kang Chon sighed and set off on his return journey to Heavy Iron City. As he left Heavy Iron City, the giant ship hanging over Fengdu City also began to start and after letting out a loud roar, it broke through space and disappeared. Heavenly Dao sect. Watching the giant ship leave, Kang Chong withdrew his sight, his heart yearning for more. There was still more than a year to go. He would be entering this sect, 
a sect that was one of the pinnacle of the flood continent. There, it would be his greatest heaven and earth. Imperial capital, with a tremor in the void. The giant ship came out across the sky, shocking everyone in the imperial capital. The crowd unconsciously looked towards the giant ship high in the air. King Zhenon, after this farewell, I don't know when we will meet again. The old city lord of Fendu said emotionally to the Zhenon king, Ha ha, old man, when you become a true disciple, don't forget about this king. Ha he. King Zhenon laughed as he left the giant ship and stepped into the imperial capital.